Welcome back to video seven in our data science series on linear regressions. Okay, uh, I'm Clifford Jordan. I'm with Science Foresight, and uh, this is a whole series of videos that we've dedicated to just linear regressions, where we actually manually do a linear regression. And so there's a lot to be learned here. We were just talking about uh, in the previous video, video six was the calculation of the p-value and what that mean <coughs> what that means okay so here's the p-value for the slope <coughs> it came out to 0 0.02 okay 0, 0, 0, 002 excuse me which is two one thousandths which means okay and I'm going to restate this again this is important it, this means that the probability that the slope or should I say the sensitivity the coupon sensitivity that's in the the, the guy's head in in our patron or client's head this is the probability that, that is really zero okay that is what we call the null hypothesis okay of course it's not zero it's it's something it's three uh, we, we've seen that because we generated it but we can't always tell because remember we're looking at behavior we don't know what's in this guy's head so we're looking at his behavior and we're trying to identify that value just through his behavior. And so what the p-value does is it helps me understand how good of a estimate is this. Um, and not so much how good or how accurate the estimate is, is but is it, <coughs> is it good enough to where I can say that what's really in this guy's head is not zero? Okay? And I can't. Because with a probability of 0 .000, 000, 0 .002, uh, two one thousandths, uh, the probability that what's in this guy's head is, uh, as far as a sensitivity being zero, is extremely small. In fact, we would say the p-value is good if it's less than 0 0.05, which is five one hundredths. So if we have a p-value that is less than that, that means I can feel really good that the variable that I'm that I have the p-value for, and in this case the variable is, a, or not the variable, but excuse me, the um, coefficient for the x, I can have a really good feeling that that should not be zero, okay? And, and that's important. If my p-value is greater than 0 0.05, let's say it's 0 0.10. It doesn't really mean that my estimate is bad. It just means that there's a good probability, a better probability, or not a better, but there's just a good probability that the actual real sensitivity in this guy's head could be zero and not what I'm estimating, okay? And that's, that's how best to interpret this. Um, it does not mean, it does not mean that the estimate for the sensitivity is accurate. No. It just means that it is not zero. Okay? Um, let's, let's go through um, some, uh, what do you call it, tests. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F9 a couple of times here. And remember, uh, right now I've got about 60 on the variance, so i got a lot of variance in here. Okay, now, um, what if I put more variance into the system? Do I expect the p-value to go up, or will it go down? Think about it. If I put more variance in, the accuracy of all my measurements is going to be less. And if the accuracy is less, then my estimate of the slope should have a lot more potential error. And if there's a lot more potential error, then my p-value, then, there, then there's a greater probability that the real true sensitivity in the guy's brain is zero. So the, the p-value should go up, right? Let's try it. Let's try it. So right now I'm at 60. Let's put it at 90. That's a lot of variance. 90. So he spends 100 plus or minus $90. Let me hit F9. See what happened to the p-value. It is close to 0 0.002. And hit F9. Ah, wow. 
zero point zero zero one. It's bigger. Or is it? What did we have before? Zero point zero zero two. No, it's actually smaller. Hmm. Interesting. I have more variance and it went down. That's not it's not normal. Let's hit it F9 a few more times, see if there's a trend here. Um, well, this is definitely bigger, 0 0.007. That's bigger than 0 0.002. Let me hit it again. Ooh, 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 ooh. 0 0.49. That's horrible. That's horrible. That's, that's way too much variance, okay? Um, and in fact, if you look, uh, look at the slope. He estimated 1.32, which is really far from, from that. So, it, you know, there's a lot of error in that, which kind of correlates with the p-value. So let's hit it again. 0 0.19. Ah, there we go. That's still high. A lot bigger than 0 0.002. Hit it again. Ah, 0 0.33. Hit it again. 0 0.26. Hit it again. Do you see a trend here? Yeah, I, the first time I hit it, I actually got something that was lower. That was kind of luck of the draw, because remember, this is all, all variance, you know. Um, but typically, the more variance you have in your data, the higher that p-value is going to be when estimating the slope or estimating the coefficient of your, of your independent variable, which the slope or which the x values are. So, just to experiment a little bit more, let's put it back down lower. We had it at 60, I believe. Um, let's put it down to 10. Now, my variance is going to be really low. That should make the p-value go low, okay? Because now it's going to be more an, ac an accurate measurement, which means that if it's more accurate, I should be more feeling better about the prediction and I should then say hey the probability that the real uh, sensitivity is zero should be very small all right let's try it out hit f9 let's go back here hit f9 Ooh, check that out right off the bat 2.655 times 10 to the minus 22nd that is like uh, 2.6, 0, 0.00, like 20, 20 some zeros, and then 265. That's extremely small probability. So this is good. So the bottom line is, is the less, least, the less variance I have in my overall data, the better the p-values are going to be. Okay, um, and when I say better, the smaller. Right, let me hit F9 again, just see what happens. Oh, minus 10 to the minus 23rd, 10 to the minus 27th. That's pretty dang small. Okay, let's put the let's put it up right around 30, and see what happens. Um, F9. Oh, there we go. So now it's uh, 10 to the minus fifth. So you can see, the more variance we have, the bigger the p-value. The smaller variance we have in the, in the data, the smaller the p-value. Cool. Now that you understand that, we can now do the same thing for the, um, what do you call it, the, the y-intercept. The one thing that's going to be different is the calculation of the y-intercept standard error. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more complicated. Because it's a y-intercept, it's not an actual variable itself. And so to, to look at that, let's do this. Let's go to... Um, right here see what the formula is here's the formula for calculating the standard error for the y-intercept uh, the B so it's the RMSE value which is uh, the error measurement for all of the, the Y predict uh, times the square root of 1 over n and this is the number of samples uh, plus X mean squared so this is the mean value of X squared all divided by the sum of the X minus X means quantity squared Okay, simple formula, you should memorize that by the end of the day, right? <laughs> Good luck. Anyways, let's go back to the uh, spreadsheet, and there it is right here. So if I click this here, 
You'll see that the RMSC is that K7 square root of 1 over N, N is 84, and then F3 is the, uh, uh, the X mean squared divided by F5, which is the sum of the X minus X mean squared. All right, so let's uncover that. And where is that? There we go. Bingo. So it comes out to $2.58. Now, I, I, I could have just said 2.58, but it's really in dollars. Um, and the reason it's in dollars is because it's the y-intercept, which is the, um, what do you call it? It's measured in dollars. So anyways, it's dollars. What this means is, is that this value, 101.95, has a standard deviation as well. And that is this right here. So it's we could say that this is the, the true value of the, of the uh, what do you call it, the, the average purchase without coupon. The true value is this y-intercept plus or minus this. And sure enough, it is. Uh, 100 is within this value, my plus or minus this uh, standard deviation. That said, the t-value is very straightforward. It's the same method we used up here. We just take the the actual predicted value divided by the standard error for that and that becomes really quickly a very high value uh, up here that was 4.3 which i said was really good this is even better this means that i can feel really good about this prediction okay next i can calculate the p-value which is the same thing i take this value here Throw in, also add in, take the t-dist of that, which is a table lookup, by the way. t-dist is that t-table lookup. I'll also put in the uh, degrees of freedom and a two-tailed test. And voila, here it is. I uncover it. And look at that. If 0 0.05 is good, uh, 3.59 times 10 to the minus 55 is perfection. Okay. Basically, that means that the probability that the true um, value here of 100, the probability that, that sh really should be zero is min infinitesimally small, okay? And that's what it means. All right, we're now at a point where we can kind of put this to bed and we're gonna talk about next what are known as confidence intervals, okay? And confidence intervals are used for when we do predictions based upon the model that we just created. So we created this model and what would you use this model for? Well if I was a store and I had this model based I could actually take this and then use this model to make predictions about how much a person would purchase if I give them a coupon of a certain amount. Of course it would have this is a model for this particular person okay so I would probably have to create a linear regression or do a, a model for every single person. But uh, this one is definitely a good person because he's got a, A, he's got a positive slope, which means he has a positive sensitivity, which means if I offer him a coupon, I'm going to make money off that coupon. Okay, so this is a guy I want to market to. All right, so now that I, I want to market to him, uh, what I want to do is create what we call a confidence interval. What I want to do is make some predictions. If I give him so much in coupons, how much is he going to give me back? And then how confident can I feel about that prediction? Okay, is that prediction got a 95% chance of being, you know, between this level and that level, you know, or 80, 70, whatever? How confident do I feel? Okay, and that's what we're going to talk about next. That said, We'll see you in the next video, which will be part eight. And uh, hopefully we'll finish with part eight. Maybe we might go to part nine. We'll see. Stay tuned. We'll see you in the next video.